Ahoy, I'm here to save you. God will save me. Hello, sir, let me throw down a rope. I've come to save you. It's okay, God will save me. I've come to save you, let me help. God will save me. <sighs> now, this is an extreme example of your flesh, otherwise known as your ego, battling your spirit. But we tend to do this quite often, whether we're aware of it or not. So how do we know when it's happening and which is which? You see, the drowning guy was so caught up in his ego and what he thought God's way of saving him would be that he was completely blind to his spirit and his connection to God and the way that God was actually trying to save his life. He was so determined that God had to save him in the way he decided that he completely missed what God was doing for him and ignored God's way because he was so convicted of his own way. And ultimately in this parable slash joke, whatever you want to call it, because this man was so focused on his ego and not his spirit and his connection with God, he drowned, he died. So how are we doing that in our own lives and in our own relationships? Are you currently in a marriage or a committed relationship that you feel is not working the way that you desire? Even if you haven't physically given up, have you emotionally, mentally, spiritually? Have you decided to take matters into your own hands or decide on your own what is and what isn't working according to you and according to your plan? Are you pushing the blame on the other person? That's an indication that you are living through your ego and not your spirit. Have you cheated? whether physically or just with desire or lust outside of your relationship and came up with some type of excuse or reasoning that that's okay. That's an indication that you're living through your ego and not your spirit. And disclaimer, I just wanna say, this does not mean staying in any type, any abusive relationship whatsoever. Are you currently single and waiting for God to bring you the right person? But much like the drowning man, they're actually right in front of your face. But maybe that person wasn't the exact thing you had in mind, or maybe it wasn't the timeline that you pictured or desired or had on your blueprint. That's an indication that you're living through your ego and not your spirit. So what do all of these circumstances have in common? That you or I, because I sure as hell am still learning this with a lot of different aspects in my life, that you have decided what this situation should look like according to you, according to society, according to your parent or your friend or your coworker or some random person online. That's not your higher self's voice, your voice that's connected to your spirit, your soul, to God. That's your human voice, your stubborn voice, your human decision-making voice and thought. And look, I know this is a little bit like a slap in the face, but let's face it, most of us need to hear it. So once we figure out we're living in our own means through our ego and not through our spirit and God, how do we fix it? First, you have to want to fix it. You can't do anything about it until you stop being stubborn and decide that your trust in God is where you want to be and that supersedes your trust in your own decision making and your own self with this limited view and limited brain that we have. Once you decide that, you have to relax into that decision and let go. Let go of needing to figure it out right now. Let go of the blueprint that you have in your mind of how you believe that things should go according to your blueprint. And once you can do that, and once you are fully committed, it's time to pray about it. It's time to thank God for showing you the best way. And that's no matter what outcome that is, whether it's the one that you believe you desire or not. Okay, look, like this is something that I'm going through in my own life, which is what led me to make this video. Well, there's always parts of our lives that we wanna control, but there's a situation in my life that I've wanted to control for a very long time. And as soon as I let go of that, I felt that peace and I felt that comfort. And I took that pressure off of myself and I'm leaning on God for that. 
he has your best interest in heart. He has my best interest in heart. He has your loved one's best interest at heart. And if we give him that love and we give him that faith and trust him, everything is going to work out the way that it should. Better than we could ever conceive. Better than we could ever imagine. So I wanna slide in a tip right here, okay? Every time you start to feel impatient or confused or frustrated or like you want to make a rash decision based off of your human emotions, just tell yourself, God's got this. God has my back. I don't need to worry about this any longer. Everything is taken care of and everything works out perfectly always. And I promise you, that's going to bring you so much peace. Every time I get some kind of intrusive thought or anxiety or whatever starts to creep up, I just tell myself a variation of that, immediate peace, immediate peace. And that fear or that worry or that anxiety, it goes away. So try that next time. And then the last thing you need to do is open your eyes. What is God already showing you? What metaphorical lifeboat are you missing that's already in front of you that's already in right in front of your face what metaphorical lifeboat are you missing or are you ignoring or are you ignorant to that's right in front of your face that god has already provided to you that you're turning a blind eye to because it's not lined up with your preconceived vision it's not lined up with your timeline exactly and be real with yourself You've got to be. Are you so caught up in your spouse's shortcomings that you're missing all of their wonderful qualities? Are you so caught up in the microscopic things that you're missing the big picture? Are you failing to take the next steps in your relationship because circumstances aren't 100% lined up perfectly and not every single one of your ducks are in a row? Really take a step back and examine these things. God put this person in your life for a reason. But if you're so stuck in your human way, if you're too stubborn to realize, or you're so caught up in your own mind and your own fears and your own limiting beliefs, you could be sabotaging something beautiful that's right in front of your face. The lifeboat's there. You're just not seeing it. You've turned the blind eye to what God is already showing you. And just because God typically speaks to you one way doesn't mean he's not speaking to you in other ways. So we might be attuned to this one specific way, right? Maybe it's visions, maybe it's a voice, maybe it's dreams, whatever. And so we're so focused on that, that we're missing all of these other ways that he's trying to guide us and speak to us. I mean, he could even be speaking to you through the person he sent you. So don't let your human ego ruin it. If you wanna learn more about how to hear from God, I will post that video right here. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you found value in this video so we can hang out again next week. I love you guys so much and I will talk to you then.